Well, thank God for yet another opportunity to share with you God's word. I believe that a class on Wednesday did stir up thoughts in your mind. And I believe that you already have an answer, like that man we mentioned did. I am resolved what to do. That after this lockdown, you can tell, you understand, you have clearly your decisions of what to do. We started by talking about, we read the story of Luke 5, 33 to 39. He said, you can't take new wine and put in old wine skin. You will lose both. You need new wine needs new wine skin. And I bet, what if you don't have new wine skin? Then you must learn the process of renewing the wine skin. And that's what we need to do. You cannot get out of lockdown and do business as usual. What if you have lost your capital? What if, you know, you need to restart everything afresh? What if there's got to be a new way to get something? See, innovation, they say, usually requires the old systems that funds, you know, you need some funding for innovation. So there's got to be something that provides the basis for the thing that you've got to do. And it's my prayer that this week will not end without you being fully persuaded and completely able to reinvent yourself. We're talking about changing seasons, changing times. You know, there's no, the only thing permanent in life is change. Physically, we're all changing. Spiritually, we're changing. So I want you to not look for excuses to remain the way you have always been. You must come to our new reality. Father, we ask help. Speak to us. Let your word make sense and let there be a revelation. Speak. Ignite the word and let faith come alive in our spirit, man. Grant us the boldness and the courage to act on the thing that you are speaking to us during this season. We give you praise and glory in Jesus' name. All right, let me take you to the story of Pharaoh and Joseph in Egypt. Now, you know the story very well. Genesis 41. Genesis 41. Look at verse 25 of Genesis 41. Verse 25 says, Now Joseph said to Pharaoh, Pharaoh's dreams are one and the same. God has told to Pharaoh what he is about to do. And we close on Wednesday saying to you, what's God saying you to do? I like Pharaoh. He had this dream he could not understand. So he made effort to gain understanding. He spoke to everybody he could reach. The people around who could bring an interpretation, he went after them. None of them gave him a convincing interpretation. And they brought Joseph from prison. He didn't say, this prisoner, what would that, if he was that good, why would he be in prison? He listened to Joseph and was persuaded. And you too, I expect that in this present circumstance, God may have spoken to you. But somehow you are not able to decode what God is saying. Learn from Pharaoh's example. Make effort to understand what God is saying to do. Talk to a prophet. Somebody who can decode deep, hard sentences. As King James would say. Somebody who can show you from scripture. This is what I perceive. This is what God was saying to you. And then you can ask. From then verse 20. He said the seven good cows are seven years. And the seven good ears are seven years. The dreams are one and the same. Verse 27. We're reading Genesis 41 verse 27. The, the seven lean and ugly cows that came up after them are seven years. And the 17 years scorched by the east wind will be seven years of famine. It is as I have spoken to Pharaoh. God has shown to Pharaoh what he is about to do. I pray that God will show you what he is about to do. I like verse 29. Behold, seven years of great abundance are coming in all the land of Egypt. I prophesy that season upon you. Seven years of great abundance. You may not be a farmer, but you will go through a season of great abundance. And after that, seven years of farming will come and all the abundance will be forgotten. 
in the land of Egypt and the famine will ravage the land. So the abundance will be unknown in the land because of that subsequent famine for it will be very severe. I don't know at what level your own resource is. But for them in Egypt, now this is long before it came, which was why we tried to convince you long before now that you are a supernatural being. Your life should not be controlled by the economy of Nigeria. Your life should not be tied to the people around you, the people you know, the things you know how to do. Your faith should be in God, not in human beings. Now, maybe you have lost everything you have had in this lockdown. Now, listen to this. What were they supposed to do? As for the repeating of the dream to Pharaoh, twice, it means that the matter is determined by God and God will quickly bring it to power. Now, let Pharaoh look for a man discerning and wise and set him over the land of Egypt. Let Pharaoh take action to appoint overseers in charge of the land and let them exact the feet of the produce of the land of Egypt in the seven years of abundance. Then let them gather all the food of these good years that are coming, store up the grain for good, for food, in the cities under Pharaoh's authority, and let them guard it. You see, food banks didn't begin now. That dream interpreting boy called Joseph started that enterprise in Egypt to preserve that land in the second seven years. He took action. Now, but Pharaoh is our study today, not Joseph. What will he do? Let Pharaoh take action. Appoint overseers. Now, what will you do? What's your own story? Pharaoh did not just pray. No, no, no. He took action. What to do? The steward we read about on Wednesday evaluated himself. I'm about to lose my job. I cannot dig. I'm not very strong. I don't know how to beg. I am ashamed. Then he resolved what to do. He had data. He knew who was owing. He knew how much they were owing. And so he could act on it. What did Pharaoh do? In verse 25, there's a new season coming. God is about to do something. We read Ezekiel 1.12. He said, follow the spirit. Go with the wind. What's God going to do after the lockdown? That's what you should find out. You can't be wrong following the spirit of God. You can't be stranded following the spirit of God. And so Pharaoh... Just follow the wind. Find a man. Who do I need post-lockdown? For Pharaoh, it was easy. What do I do? Make appointments. Verse 34. Verse 36. Appoint a man over the land. Then save 10, 20% of the proceeds of the land in the seven years coming. He took that word. It didn't come from the London School of Economics or from Harvard or from John Hopkins. Now you know the John Hopkins data is what the governments around the world are now using now for the COVID-19 story. Now, but you see, he had a local in-house prophet that if he had ignored, it wouldn't have shown immediately. It wouldn't have shown in the next seven years. It would have shown probably from about the eighth and the ninth year. Now that I'm speaking to you, it may not look like, well, it's clicking. It's making sense. But I pray that one year from now, you will be happy that you took action. One year from now, you, can, you will be able to say, thank God, I took that step that God spoke to me about during the lockdown. And see where God has brought us. You are not going to be among those who are going to say, well, we are going to pray. Don't worry. Let's not do anything. No, 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 no. Pharaoh looked for Joseph. He understood the dreams. When he got the instructions, he implemented them. The central bank is talking of loans. People can get up to 3 million as individuals. Cooperatives can get 20 million. It's time to have a plan. It's time to sit up and say, 
Ha, they say I don't have a capital. Well, government is making them available. Low interest loan. They have even said that there will be no charges. Now, but they are, are you aware of all that? Or you are used to complaining and you want to sit down and just complain and complain. No, Pharaoh appointed Joseph, gave him latitude, gave him authority, gave him room, and he implemented the dream for Pharaoh. This is your own time. You are not working for anybody. You are working for yourself. That should make you more serious. But you know, as a pastor, I see so many people who are not even interested in their own life. And that saddens me. It, 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 it worries me. People who have no desire, people who are not look, making any effort to accomplish anything meaningful in their own lives. May that not be your story. So do like Joseph or, and Pharaoh did. He appointed. Who do you need post-lockdown? Who is that wise man? Who will be the Joseph? Who, is, who will be the link between you and God's prophetic agenda in this, start, in this difficult time? Whenever there's a new government in Nigeria in the last couple of seasons, one prayer I always pray is God send a Joseph to that cabinet. Somebody who will be the link between heaven and this king. Every government needs that kind. Without Joseph, Pharaoh would have been ruined. But you see, with Joseph, the world came to Egypt for sustenance. Now, it was God, it was Pharaoh that God spoke to. But it was not Pharaoh that implemented the plans. Now, which is the problem with, with, with low self-esteem leaders? You will always have a way to think that uh, because you are the one, the boss, you must be the one to do everything. No, no. If you read your Bible, you will understand. The Bible talks about the mighty men of David. David didn't do everything. He fought in the wars, oh yes. But they remember that the time came when he said, the people said to him, you will no longer fight with us. You are the light of Israel. Don't quench our light. Because he had dependable people around him. Who are those around you? Do you listen to counsel? Or you think you know everything, so everybody around you should be the one listening to you? No. No. That will be one of the ways. We close on Wednesday talking about you choosing your company. Proverbs 13, 20 says, He that walks with the wise will be wise, but a companion of fools will be destroyed. Who are your closest people? Do they have a plan for the post-lockdown people? What were you even doing during that season? Were you associating with wise people who are futuristic in their thinking and in their plans? May the Lord help you in the name of Jesus. So Pharaoh prayed, he, he acted, and we said things you must do. Listen, we're going to have seven years of plenty. So what do we do during that time? We build silos. We store grains. Now, under the hand of Pharaoh, it is not the kind of store you can open every day. Nobody was to have access to it. Look at how the federal government and, of course, our state government, and that's very interesting, that our state government from locally produced food in our state can send trucks and trucks of meals around the state. Now imagine that you as an individual could have done that. If you also took God's word seriously and followed the instructions. Families in Egypt could have done that. So they, they stored grains in a way that they could not reach. And then during the season of farming, you see, we don't do the same thing in different seasons. During their first seven years, they stored. During the second seven years, they opened up the stores and began to eat from what they had kept. He said, Pastor, we cannot have any store. Listen, 
you cannot be wiser than God. He said 20%. 20%. 2010. We thought our people from this scripture. No, no, no. I think it's from 2000. We said to them, from 2000, by 2010, we want to see world class people. The next 10 years, do a club, 2010. Club 2010, sign up. You must live on 70% of your income. Invest 20. And of course, give your tight as 10. And we saw all kinds of poor people. 2,000, 1,000. Today, many of those people, low-income people, they live in their houses. They have well-established businesses from that little investment club. Of course, we could see from Scripture that if you kept aside 20%, there was, there was abundance of food. There was a lot of money. God didn't even say 50%, 20%. They put it aside in Egypt. He could keep them for another seven years when there was severe famine. So you can't say, I don't have enough. No, you need, you keep aside something before you start spending. It's tough. It's difficult. I understand. I preached it. I found it difficult. But you know, I can't, I can't, I can't, if, if I tell you the story of how I was able to come over two events, my driver then, bringing me to work, told me his uncle is going to sell land. So I said, how is it concerned? He said, he will buy it. I said, how? He said, from his club activities. He had collected his money, he had bought shares, he had looked at it. If he sells all that he has, he will make enough money to buy that land. And I said, how do you know how much shares you had? He said, from that, your newspaper. I collected my newspaper. When we got to the office, I said, show me, he showed me. And I said, no. He can't outgrow me. Ten years later, I lost a dear friend of mine. When he died, his last child was in the university. And every one of them had a house to their name. I was at his son's graduation. He gave them cars. And then when he died suddenly, my own children are far behind. I knew that I had no plans for them. My life took a different turn. Those two events challenged me. You see, the Bible talks about the God who gives bread to the eater and seed to the sower. You can't eat your seed and then complain. Whatever you get, 20%. If you use this principle that God used to serve Egypt and the world of Pharaoh's time, the world of Joseph's time, you too will save yourself. You need to do something. And then you will be amazed at how God will bless your effort. So the time of that season was a time to store. So as you come out of the lockdown, I think that it's going to be a time to invest or to do something from the little that you have left over. Ah, you say, Pastor, I really don't have any leftover, no problem. Thank God for government efforts. Their loans, cheap loans around. If you, if you are meaningful, uh, if you can do what they expect you to do, you can get those things done. And of course, the Bible says that whatever he does shall prosper. Even if you don't have a loan, all you need is do something. And doing something does not, you don't need to rent a shop to do something. You can start a business that does not require an office. You can start a laundry business by going to people's houses to wash their clothes and iron for them. You can start a cooking business by going to cook soup for the families who have. You know how to cook. And you cook delicious meals. And they invite you to come and cook for them. And they will be glad. And you make a lot of money. Let God guide you. Go the way of the Spirit. But if you come out of this lockdown without a plan, I don't see how your life can be meaningful. If you come out of this lockdown to live your life the way you have all listened, the world has changed. Now, everybody now holds virtual meetings. Schools are now doing assignments online. I don't mean in New York, in the city of Uyo. Little kids are now doing video classes organized by their schools. You can't fold your hands and say, no, 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 pastor. It cannot happen here. I mean, people are doing it in your environment. So sit up, my friend. 
Use your head. The other problem with believers is that we think that whatever we have prayed about is solved. Prayer is fantastic. I pray. I like the lesson. He said, pray as if everything depends on it. Then walk as if everything depends on it. So when you are praying, brother, pray. Hand everything over to God. Lord, without you, we can do nothing. We need you to show up for us. Our efforts are meaningless. And after you have prayed, you are taking effort. Take effort, make effort as if God does not exist. Walk as if, listen, everything depends on your effort. You can't be so lazy and then, then, you know, the Bible talks about the sluggard who goes hunting and then he cannot roast the game that he brought home. Every day you have a new excuse. Today the sun is too high. Pastor, didn't you not rain around your house? I like Lagos vendors because rain does not stop them. Of course, if you live in Lagos and you have suffered, <laughs> no, no weather will stop you from doing what you need to do to survive. Friends, this is our time. If Pharaoh could go around to find wisdom, I want to challenge you not to just sleep away this free time that you have. If Pharaoh could appoint people to help him, you can't continue, continue in your ignorance. Who do you need to talk to? Who do you need to learn from? Who do you need to bring that change into your life to help you do something differently from the way you've always done? To bring you into a new body of knowledge? Father, we ask for help. Bring us into new companies. That wise man we need to bring change to our life. We know it's not far from us. Oh God, open our eyes, open our ears. Let's, as we talk, let's know the person. And grant us the opportunity, the, the, the humility, the presence of mind to ask. And grant us the favor of acceptance. Lord, meet our need. That capital that we need to bring our business back to life, we receive it now. The door, the right door to knock upon, to receive that favor, Lord, we see it now. Grant us the courage to walk into it. Thank you, Father. We give you praise. We give you glory. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We ask that help, help, supernatural help will reach you as you fellowship with each other and as you let the, you know, you know our in-house wear, a way of meeting needs. That's why those house meetings are called care fellowships. So if you stay away from them, you may be staying away from help. So connect with the church on your street. Connect with the church in your neighborhood. And that way, we will get to know that you're doing well or you're not doing well and help can reach you. God bless you. See you on the other side of the lockdown.